Kia ora welcome to Inside Netball. Well, we've got another big show on our hands. Let's get straight into the big talking point of the week. The Stars beating the Pulse in Wellington in the elimination final. They got the monkey off their back. Yvette McClaws and Jury from the Pulse will be joining us shortly, but I want to get straight into the elimination final. Jen and Courtney, I want your thoughts. What a game that was. Well, it was, and it was incredibly hard to begin with to even pick who, who was the favourite. And I think, actually, I think just about all of us picked the pulse, but, pulse yeah. but only because you sort of think, well, you know, they've won two out of the last three. Uh, they, you know, you then match them up sort of player for player. But I thought that the uh, stars just kept their heads. They did the basics really well. And I just think a little bit of um, perhaps nervousness or inexperience on the pulse side of things cost them in the end. Yeah, I agree, and I think we all saying you could pretty much flip a coin in who was going to win this one. The Pulse had a strong start, but the Stars, they just grind away and they don't give away ball. Uh, the Pulse, I thought Maddie, uh, Maddie Gordon, she had moments of individual brilliance, especially in that first half. I would have liked to see a little bit more in that third quarter when they went down 16 to 8. I said, I'm not sure what was said at half time, but for the Stars to come out and put 16 to 8 in that third quarter, I thought Ellie Temu and Holly Fowler were outstanding on defence. Will they keep it that way against the Mystics? I'm not sure. But for me, it was really that third quarter where the Stars just came out firing and the Pulse, they didn't really have any answer. They almost went into their shell. The crowd was quiet. And then once it started, yeah, rolling in that fourth quarter, it all just picked back up again. Well, two things. It felt like there were that many Stars supporters in the crowd and they were loud and raucous. I hate that we always talk about this because it's so cliche, but the championship quarter, the third quarter, why is it always the case? Because more often than not. It is, but I know both of you are holding back a little bit there. You want to talk about you mentioned it, Jen, the inexperience, the last few minutes or so, the kind of moment when uh, we felt like Tiana Maturdo and Amelia Wormsley were playing the ball around with about a minute to go. Do you think that moment cost them? Well, I think inevitably it did. I mean, you could argue they should never have been in that position anyway, but they were. Uh, and Maturdo there she is with the ball and I think, you know, just sort of puts it down, mucks about. Can't his foot, no one's yeah. really... No urgency. No urgency. Absolute no urgency. And look, I can be prepared to forgive Wormsley. I mean, she's, she's a... Well, but actually, no, am I? I don't know that I am. I mean, she's 19. She should know, you know, big-time netball. She's been around long enough now, really. But um, I think uh, because, of course, you know, they had... Uh, so, they, yeah, 30 yeah. seconds? at the centre pass, which is enough time to play it around safely. Uh, Courtney, I'm sure you've been in situations like this before. And, um, yeah, the Stars, they just nailed it. They did what they needed to do with the time they had. Well, they do, and you train for moments like this. And I spoke to Maya Wilson, and she actually said her and Gina, whilst the pulse were mucking around, I guess, down the other end of the court, they knew there was about 75 seconds to go. And Maya said to Gina, we're going to hold the ball for a minute because they assumed the pulse would take it quickly. And, Maya, and then Gina said to Maya, I think that's too long. And Maya <laughs> said, well, you're going to be the one running around. You hold on to it for a minute. Get it to us within 10 and we'll score. But it worked out. They got it within 30. And so I just wonder where was the leadership? I know it was loud in there. You couldn't even hear the umpires. But someone in the polls needed to tell the shooters or one of the shooters needed to say, we need to take this quickly to put the pressure back on the stars, back our defence. Kelly Drury, I think she'd just gotten a turnover. Back your defence to apply the pressure. Or if the stars do score, you've, you've got, got an option time. to have a centre pass. So I agree with you, Jenny. Is it inexperience? Is it just the, in the big, big games, big moments? And I thought that the stars handled it really well. But is it a sign of good captaincy? Because yes. it, and, and the advantage of having Crampton right in the, the middle of the swim. Now, I know Tiana Maturo is a co-captain. Um, Kelly Jury, the other captain for the you know, way down, way the, other down the other end yes. and out of it and I've always you know I've always thought that's why often captains or goal shoots don't make the best captains but then that doesn't always you know follow true but no great example of of how to run out a game and also too another example I thought where Mali Sala steps up and just clinches those you know she does she must have what is it? Ice in her veins. She that? does, I think. She's made for those moments. Yes. I love it. And, like, you saw in comparison down the other end, Tiana, for me, if she's setting the penalty, she could have just stepped in and taken the shot instead of putting it down because then Wormsley passes it to her where she would have been anyway. Like, for me, Tiana should have just taken it. It almost felt like watching it that 
Tiana was doing it on purpose. Like she had a reason. Yeah, for it's it almost like slow. she it's looked like up at the thought, clock. Hmm, if I play it round long enough, I don't know. I'd love to know what she was thinking yeah. in that moment, what her thought process was. Because to me, it was so much of the opposite, like no urgency at all, that it looked like it was on purpose. But I can't, I can't come to a conclusion about why that would be. The other interesting thing, you mentioned Holly Fowler and there was a little bit of chat before the game when the team lists came out and um, people like me who didn't really think things through very far went, oh, Holly Fowler's got the start because she hasn't had that many games. And then, of course, all the other wise people on the game said, well, of course, she would match up against Tiana Maturo. Yeah. But I wonder, now that they're through and they're going to be up against the Mystics next week, does Nawai Thauthau come back in or who, how, you know, how do you approach that game? I think Nawai Thauthau comes back in. I think the big decision is do you have Nathan on Petatuiava or do you put Holly Fowler there? That's the big question for me because Holly can swing either way and I think that you have Thauthau back on Grace. So yeah. who do you, who, who's shutting down Petta? I think Simone Nathan did such a great job of shutting down Petta. She knows her so well in a couple of those previous games. But what a luxury for Kitty Wills to be able to mix it up on defence if she needs to. Uh, just quickly, I know you touch on Kelly Jury, but... I mean, had they, had they won the game, I feel like she kind of single-handedly won it for them. Crucial intercepts in moments, seven games. you got to feel for her. <laughs> I know. Look, game 100. And, um, you know, that, Jeepers, they've had a lot of centurions, haven't they, this season? You know, I, you could just tick them all off. The board. Which is almost oh. why, like, especially in the polls, it's almost why you can't say they don't have the experience to close See, out a final like games. that. They've won grand finals together. That's very true. But I wonder, I wonder if when you start playing and you're 16, that's, you know, you're very much a junior member of the team, aren't you? I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to make excuses for her, but I wonder if you don't gain the same sort of experience as if you come into the team at 21 or something. Yeah, I agree. But yes, great work by Kelly Drury. She stood up as a captain when you needed her to. She got her team ball. I thought it was a very strong perform performance, especially for her 100th. Yeah, well, those are our thoughts. A quick download on the elimination final so far. We're very lucky to now bring in head coach of the Pulse, Yvette McCall's and Jerry, for her thoughts. Has she recovered? Let's see. Kia ora, Yvette. Kia ora. Thank you so much for joining us. Great backdrop you've got there. Beautiful little spot in the CEO's office. So, yeah, a few photos of memorabilia across the years. Yeah. Nice little spot. I have to ask, have you recovered? How are you feeling now after uh, Sunday night's big game? Yeah, I'm still really proud of the effort. I think um, certainly in lots of ways the team has really stretched the season and we were really pleased to make that third spot. It just could have been anybody's at any stage. So really grateful to get the opportunity and an amazing game on Sunday. You know, it just wasn't wasn't to be our day, but an uh, awesome game and certainly was, it was highly skilled. It was everything you're going to expect in a, you know, finalist um, scramble for the tail end. And I thought it really resembled, Deason's been like, lots of close contests, anybody's game on any given day. Um, so, no, really enjoyed it. And, look, I stay much the same, win, lose or otherwise, um, keep a pretty even keel about things. So, no, really proud and, and really grateful to have got that far. Was there any one area where you think that is where we lost it? Not any one particular area when I think about, I'm um, certainly that third quarter is a really obvious time where we, you know, certainly got hammered in that piece, but it wasn't even one individual. There were a number of scattered uh, balls and different things that went on at that stage. So, no, I, I thought, look, you, you can always look back and, there's lots of things that went on. It was it was everything that the season's been. There was lots of physicality. There was lots of challenge. There was amazing skill set. So, no, look, I I don't think there was any one particular thing. Uh, when we had our numbers at the end, and we still did our debrief and had a look through the numbers because there was a lot to celebrate. We've really had the season to get our loss rate down, and we had a 1.9 loss rate. Stars had two. We got 15 gains. They got 15 gains, 12 losses each. You know, like the numbers everywhere were, were pretty tight. Normally, our numbers in terms of three-quarter tack have been a little bit better in the past, uh, but that's finals netball. So uh, I didn't think there was any one thing in particular. Again, people have talked about, would you have played that last, you know, 45 seconds differently? And we've practised every scenario, obviously, 
leading up to it. But when things, you know, the pressure comes on, they did what they thought was the right thing to do. But um, yeah, yeah, look, hindsight's a wonderful thing. And if we could yeah. live life and play the game in hindsight, we might do a lot of things differently. But no, I'm, I'm really pleased. They had the legs, they freshened up that week. If they had to go to overtime, which it was starting to head in that direction, then goodness knows what have hap- would have happened. Mm. But um, no regrets. They played with everything they had and absolutely, yeah, pleased with them. No regrets of it, but I am going to take you back to that moment because we spoke about it. You obviously practice these scenarios in training. I guess what is what did you practice in training if that was going to happen with a minute left on the clock and the other team centre pass? Yeah, so that was the real challenges. Um, we've practiced at a minute, we've practiced at 45, practiced at 30, uh, your centre pass, their centre pass. By and large, the idea is to, you know, to score quick enough and then back yourself to, to if, if they score that you get another uh, centre pass back, so how quickly you can play to the other end. We ended up, they called, if I remember rightly, and honestly, I haven't really watched it again that thoroughly, but um, there were a number of penalties in the circle. And so we were in there in reasonable time, but we had to keep resetting the penalty shot. Uh, So that took up a lot of time. And at that point, they started to rethink, geez, do we actually try and hold it a little bit longer? Are we starting to run Mm. out of time to go their centre pass plus ours? And that was a decision they made that they'd try and hold a little bit longer and see if they could scramble. And boy, it it was so close, wasn't it, to going to overtime. So you practice all of it, but oh gosh, life and reality compared to practice isn't always the same. (laughs) So I was pleased that they, you know, really fought back to get in that game because, you know, eight losing eight, by eight, you know, eight sixteen and quarter three normally would be lights out at that stage. So really proud of their resilience, their ability to just maintain position and always just keep finding ways. But no, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Of course, I'd love to be in the grand final. They're just really <laughs> special occasions. But not everybody can get there, and and not everybody can make the top three. And I think there were plenty of teams knocking on the door this season. We were just saying off air that that game's going to be hard to top even for a grand final. So um, absolutely right. It was a great game to be involved in a bit. If we look at the uh, pulse season as a whole, you've got the youngest team in the competition. I'm not sure what your expectations were pre-season, but how would you rate how they've kind of performed and finished up? Yeah, look, I think for me, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit delusional, but I always have an expectation that we can make a finals. And I think that's a really important stretch every season to have. Uh, we had obviously celebrated four players with 100 caps this year, and even though they're all still really young, I believe that that experience and that time together, that retention makes a big difference around building. So that was definitely where we were aiming for. Um, fell short, but that's okay. I think the pursuit in terms of progressive improvement and incremental change, not only in the team and their performance, but more importantly, the incremental shift that we've been able to see and, and help change in individuals has been huge. I've, I feel confident that we've seen growth in every one of our players this season, and um, that's always quite hard to do when a number of them are either in the same position or have been around a really long time to just keep finding growth. So obviously, Amelia, that's a really obvious piece of growth, and that was huge, but I even can see in Kelly, you know, little things just starting to get the jump on the shot, really being able to hold a lean. And I think she came close to getting some held balls. And that that's growth that's just small. But in others like Amelia, there's big growth for Maddie to be really consistent over a whole season, really calm in her performances, to see Whitney really drop her loss rate down and focus on that retention and that ability to really hold her attention to task is huge. Uh, Her loss rate in game one was double figures and she's, you know, consistently after that got that right down. And I just think that just shows maturity and it takes time and it takes uh, time for them to really believe what their skill set is and then to find just one or two things each season that are about saying as an individual, you've got to leave the season having grown. It can't just be about team outcomes. Otherwise, you know, it could be a really disappointing time. So, that balance of finding how to improve an individual and how that leads to uh, collective outcomes is still really important. You've stepped away before and come back. Is this yeah. it? 
Oh, crack up, all right. Look, the players <laughs> did, said the same thing. We, uh, it was actually a really nice opportunity for us to just sit after that game. And of course, it was an early game. It wasn't a late night, but had a chance just to sit and gave them time to reflect not only about that game, but what they're really grateful for and what they're really proud of. Um, and so some of them are like, oh, I think she's just going to come back again. But <laughs> no, look, I... Um, it does look a bit that way, but certainly for me, it's it's never over. I'll always be involved in the game, and there'll be you know another team somewhere that needs a coach, and so whatever the level that is, I'm I'm certainly keen to still be involved. But yeah, for me, education's a really big part of um, what we're about, and this is something that Nathan's been really focused on and keen to do. So it's time for me to not live my selfish existence in Wellington, flitting around and having a lovely time and getting back and doing some other things. So I, I really look forward to it, but I'll leave it loving it. absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, won't be easy, but, you know, nothing in life worth doing is easy. And Yvette, your replacement has been named. It is the assistant coach, Anna. So she's been part of the Pulse franchise and the development system down there. So what will she bring as a coach to this side? Yeah, look, really excited. There was a huge process and impressed with they had lots of elements to get through to that stage. They did media interviews. They, yeah, look, it was a massive piece. They had to do feedback on a couple of games. So really thorough process um, that was led by Fran and Y to get to this point. But Anna's a really experienced coach. She's coached internationally. She's been obviously with our NNL uh, team in Manawa and had success there. She's on been two years, this is her second year with the Pulse, and her specialty is in the attacking end, has a really strong understanding tactically, was a shooter herself and played um, what was National Bank Cup for those of us who are still old enough to remember those days. Uh, so has a huge amount of experience, but most importantly is really passionate about netball passionate about developing herself, really open to learning, and is also currently on the Hapaitanga program. Uh, so is getting lots of other, you know, extensions. So uh, look, I, I just think like everything, retention is really important too. And it's great that she's come out the other side of that process and has, has proven her worth and knows the system, knows the kaupapa, knows the players. And so I hope that transition is a really smooth one for everybody. I know there's a lot of work that's gone into place with particularly why and Fran and of course Fran's leaving as well so um, we've got more jobs on offer than anywhere else I think <laughs> down here. Fran obviously being your CEO who's been around for a very long time, Yvette your own transition I guess out of netball it's not happening overnight you're still involved with Fiji for the World Cup can you talk to us about that? Yeah really excited it's a huge opportunity and Netball New Zealand through Tanya Karodi have helped make that opportunity a reality so I've been over in January to the first training camp and amazing people look their resort their greatest resources their people they don't have a domestic competition the venues are are challenging netball's not a priority sport so it's really different to what we experience here and it certainly makes you really grateful for what you have um, here in New Zealand and, and of course we're never happy we always want more but what I'm really looking forward to is just being exposed to that ability to assess international opposition to bring a team and contribute to that group of players who have got a real range of experience. There's a couple there who have been, this will be their third World Cup. And so they've been around a bit right to, you know, young ones who this is the first time that they'll go to a major competition. But on top of that, they don't have a consistent ability to play the game. So some real, I think for me, the, the most important thing is remember the strengths that they bring, make sure that we're really clear about celebrating the strength that they bring as an individual. And then on top of that, the ability to have um, some growth for each of them to say, okay, well, if I can make progress in these areas, what's that going to add to our collective? And I think it's easy to to come and say, this is how we do it. And so this is what will, will be done rather than just look, this is where the start point is. This is where they're at and uh, yeah, working from their strength base. So there's a few of you, I think Ranga Bloxham is going to be there with Wales and you'll be there with Fiji. Could this yes. be seen as a, a stepping stone towards building up a little bit of international experience towards one day a tilt at the Ferns job? Yeah, for sure. I think, look, the, the whole idea of, of these opportunities is about growth and I've been fortunate to have plenty of time um, in different environments, including some time as an assistant 
with the silver ferns and then on top of that that uh, the learning that you get here in a franchise that day in day out the ability to run a campaign over a long period of time they are completely different um, similar when I was with 21s that you're somewhat isolated and a, a little bit on you know dial uh, when you're outside of those spaces as a national coach but I you know I hope that this adds value to to me as a coach and I'm sure it will it keeps growing and that ability to keep being open to growth and knowing that you're you know you're never the complete coach and if you can be willing to learn then there's opportunity ahead and, and being ready if opportunity presents what that looks like and if it presents. Now, Yvette, the Ferns, they do get named next week. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I'm not going to get you to name your team, but who, in your opinion, is really putting their hand up at a spot in that black dress? Yeah, I think there's been a number of real standout performances and probably, um, like, when I look at Kate Burley, I thought, gosh, she's done an amazing job. She's worked incredibly hard. Is that a player they're going to take in the Ferns? I don't know, but a consistent performer certainly when we think about the ANZ, definitely was the trial for the um, Silver Ferns for World for World Cup. I think she's been a really consistent player. I've been I've been impressed with Maddie's consistency this season, and I think she's really consolidated uh, both from an attacking and defensive perspective. So I think she's done a really good job. Of course, I, I love what Whitney does, and I think she's got a really special mix. But I look at the combinations that can happen with Peter um, Grace. You know look at um, Gina and her ability to, the loss rate is always low, the consistency, the ability to find space under pressure. That midcourt, oh my gosh, that is just <laughs> incredibly tight. And what a, what a privilege to have such amazing choices because they're really in form. This year's shooting group across the board, we had the, the best shooting percentages across all teams this season. Now, consistency-wise, uh, Grace is Grace is just. Grace. I just think she's special. <laughs> Grace, just special. Yeah, uh, hard to mark. Just growing in terms of her ability to take ball. Yeah, people complain she might not have range, but why do you need it if you can get that close to the post? I say, but I think she's yeah, she's an exceptional player. So oh my gosh, I think just named some of the twenty ones really, didn't I? <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look I, I look, I think it's going to be a difficult decision and wonderful. That's what it was meant to be, to put pressure on selectors. And I know, you know, we, we can all, people will get to their five probably and everyone agrees and there's always argy-bargy on who's, who's in after that. But, yeah, I'm going Grace will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lock Grace in. I'm sure um, another one of your players, Kelly Jerry, has probably locked her place in too. While we've got you here, Yvette, I want to pick your coaching brain. Would you consider taking five mid-quarters to a World Cup and maybe dropping down to three shooters? Is that something you think I could think, be on the cards? Yeah, I think you can do all sorts of things, particularly when you've got a 12. I look at how creative you can be with a 10, um, you know, a roster of 10 players. But... I think with a 12, you can get quite creative. I think the other nice thing about the World Cup different to Com Games is you're able to replace people in competition. And that's a really different feel when you're at Com Games. You're basically just reducing numbers. So I think there's room for that. That said, South Africa is a long way away. So unsure whether part of that is about taking uh, those backup players with them so that that transition, that readiness can be made quickly. So they'll be obviously thinking through those scenarios, but it's whether there's enough slides in terms of a you know wing attack. Look, this season we we always say to Whitney, you could be our wing attack goal attack slide if we're looking for that mobility, and of course she turns and shoots as she does. So it depends on where people are at, and we've got strength you know across all areas of court, but there's lots of points of difference, and it's going to depend. A lot on the style of game. I agree. I think Kelly's done really well and she's got the height. But if they're wanting to play a real mobile game, who knows what they'll they'll look for in terms of defence in there. So I think they've got choices and, and genuine choices um, as long as that clarity is what does that player bring and what is it that they are required to do. I think that's the key piece. It's a blessing and a curse, all these choices for yeah. Tim Knowles and the selectors. Yvette, thank you so much for your time. Um, just on behalf of all of us, you know, congratulations on an incredible career with The Pulse. Uh, sad to see you go, but hoping maybe you'll be back. Uh, but for now, yeah, thank you so much for joining us on Inside Netball.
Oh, pleasure. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. Well, of course, they all get one last chance to impress Silverfern selectors in the grand final this weekend. Who's going to have a blinder or who needs to have a blinder, do you think? Well, it depends what you're asking, of course, Storm, because do you want to have a blinder to get the final or do you want to have a blinder to get in the team? But I think first things first, you want to win the grand final. And I think as far as the mystics are concerned, Phil de Vuy needs to have a blinder because I think, uh, you know, Monica Faulkner was just getting into some beautiful form. Um, she's out now and Vui's in and she's not doing too badly, but she needs to have a good one. For me, it's both the wing defences. Who's shutting down Gina? Who's shutting down Petter? So both the wing defences have to have really strong games. And then if it's like Michaela Sokolich beats in, I think that will also put her in very good stead to put her hand up for the black dress. Well, that's where it gets interesting because we want Mickey there, but then as she covers an extra midi, an extra defender, that's why I wanted to talk to a vet. It's all so confusing. But we'll park that for now because, of course, the team is being named next week. We will dissect it then. Predictions for the grand final, just quickly. Oh, I'm going to flip win? a coin, Mystics. Ah, oh. mm. and I'm not even going to flip a coin. I'm going to get Mystics by seven. Mystics by seven. And you'll, you'll be a star storm. Well, I'd like to see the stars win. I'm just glad it's an all-Auckland final. We haven't had one of those yet. So it will be a great match. Make sure you're tuning in on Sky Sport this weekend for the grand final. For now, Jenny Courtney, thank you so much for joining me. And we'll see you next time on Inside Netball.